G'day, Bomber fans. That was not the start of the year we were hoping for. Uh, we uh, went in as favourites. The girls are going in at $1.40 for those punters out there. But it's ended in disaster. We thought it'd be an easy win, but Freo have belted the Bombers after a goalless first quarter, 64-21. to uh, We now sit in the bottom four to start the season, and it doesn't really get much easier from here for the rest of the year. We needed that win to get us off to a fast start, but unfortunately it's the opposite, uh, which means we now have an unhappy review to get through, so let's get into it. Quarter by quarter recap, the first was a bit of a frustrating one. We were completely dominating. The ball was living in our forward half, but we just couldn't capitalise on our dominance. Just 8-0 to zero in windy and wet conditions. Daria Bannister kicked us off for the season with a set shot and our defence really held up well from the few attacks that Frio had. The second term, the, the tone entirely changed after a, a massive collision that left not one but two of our four, uh, forwards injured for the game and potentially longer, we don't know yet. Amber Clark was knocked out, Bonnie Toogood, our star player and captain injured her knee, they wouldn't return to the field, we don't know how bad her knee injury is yet uh, but that really shifted things for the game. From there, the Dockers would pile on four goals. It was looking real dire until Daria Bannister popped up with her second from a pretty controversial umpiring call in our favour. The third was a real tussle. They kicked an early goal that looked uh, hard to come back from, and from there it was all about how well we could exit our back half and progress the ball with dare and pace. It seemed like for about 10 minutes we were just slowly creeping up the field. We'd enter our forward 50, but it would exit just as quick. In the end, it was Alex Morecambe uh, and her goal that got us back within a sniff. Sophie Alexander actually had a chance to get us uh, within single digits with a set shot, but we trailed by the last break uh, by just two goals. We were always going to be up against it in the last, but the Dockers kicked some early goals uh, to put us to bed. We ended up losing pretty comfortably in the end. There was one clear scoring side, and the Dockers really capitalised when they were going that way. Uh, they in the, in the end, we just gave up. We dropped our heads, and, the, and we let the Dockers trounce us. It was pretty reminiscent of some of the male performances throughout the year. Bit woeful to start. We lost by seven goals, which in the AFL is a huge amount. We were belted. Alright, so how did we lose this game? Uh, we got to stop, uh, talk about the shift in momentum. When Toogood and Clark collided, we were leading 8-0. We were controlling the game, just not really taking our chances. But the ball was in our forward 50. Toogood was actually about to take a mark and for a set shot uh, when it happened, but that that knock, um, it was big. It was impactful. Windy Hill evidently fell silent after it. Players were visibly pretty upset, and the Dockers pounced on that little advantage uh, that was thrown their way. We dropped our heads, and they lifted theirs. They kicked four goals straight, and, and that, that won them the game. We, we tried to remain in the contest, but by the end, we just had... We'd run out of legs and motivation, but I really do think the game would have been very, very different without that clash. Uh, it is not an excuse, though. I'm not making excuses. I think it shows a clear lack of leadership. Our captain gets injured, and no one really manages to lift in terms of leadership from there. A few tries by example, but there just seemed to be no calming presence on the field when it really mattered. So after the collision, they kicked 10 goals, we kicked two. It shows that we uh, can be an easy team to overrun if things don't go our way. Everybody gets injuries. It's just, it's part of footy, but it's how we respond to those injuries and those adversities when they occur, because we really failed to do that against the Dockers, a team we should really be beating. I'm just going to throw some stats at you to really hone in on how poor we were after quarter time. So we led inside 50s 11 to 6 at quarter time. We ended up only getting nine more for the rest of the game. The Dockers piled on 30 four after the first break. Uh, we actually had one inside 50 in, in the last quarter, right in the dying seconds. Scoring shots was 3-0 to zero after quarter time, and it was 3-14 to 14 after. Our efficiency around the ground was shocking. 50%, the Dockers had over 60. We just completely dropped off and the Dockers didn't. It was, it was pretty disappointing. It's not the type of performance you want to dish out in the opening round of the season. That is something a young team, uh, well, you can explain with a young team, late in a year, but right on the start of a year, it's not ideal. I think that last term in particular, the second you can pin down to shock, shock of that collision, but the last five goals to nothing, that, that really can't be excused. It was a mix of things, motivation, uh, fitness, uh, composure, especially down defence. We threw Matty Gay forward to replace two good, but that took away valuable leadership back there. A lot really went wrong for us, not just that collision. I reckon our back line still looks a little bit dysfunctional, and part of that was because we had to throw magnets around after injuries, but even before, we, we looked a tad shaky. We looked easy to get out the back against. A lot of the goals we conceded were from kicks that went over a contest, and, and the Frio forwards just had more pace to chase it down. We let uh, Ty kick four goals, and McCarthy kick two. There were dangerous forwards throughout the game that we just weren't really containing. And on the flip side, the Dockers defended our attacks really well. They managed to rebound, uh, rebound super effectively, and they often transition the ball, which you don't see as much in the AFLW. A lot of rebounds are for territory and stoppages in this league, but the Dockers would get serious meters on their chains, and it's why the inside 50 count was so lopsided, despite clearances being uh, pretty even. Uh, they beat us for clearances by two, and almost 20 for inside 50, so credit to their back line, but also worries for ours. It looks really poor, and it's only going to get harder from here. This was seen as one of the easy matchups for the year. Look, all in all, it's a really disappointing way to start the season. You want to get off to a good start, and, and we didn't in more ways than one. 
At, at the time of filming, we don't know how bad Too Good's knee is. I, I just hope it's a contact injury and one that only keeps her sore for a few days. That's the best case scenario because we cannot afford to lose her. She is by far our best player, or most valuable player, I should say. And Amber Clark, she's in concussion protocols, so we, um, we hope both of them are okay. We need them if we want to push the finals, but... Overall, um, without those injuries, it's just a bad day. We not only lost, but we were belted. In a year where percentage is going to be really important, there's going to be quite a few teams pushing for finals, meaning percentage is crucial. And ours is shot now. We need to work hard to get it back to a respectable figure. We have West Coast next week. I'll preview that in a second. But first, let's get on to the votes. I won't ask you to leave yours down below because views are still looking minimal from that uh, preview I put out. Uh, so I'll give my five votes at the end of every week just to make it interesting. One vote to Amy Gaylor on debut. I thought she stood up really well, especially late. Uh, she she had our team, uh, led our team for intercept possessions and marks and generally used that left boot pretty well. Two votes to Steph Wales in the ruck. She was beaten by a direct opponent, but I still think she had a good impact in the air and around the ground. 35 hitouts, 14 disposals. Uh, three votes to Darry Bannister. She didn't do a lot, but what she did do was really big for us. She was the only player that looked uh, like scoring when the ball was around her. Kicked two goals, had nine touches. Four votes to Maddie Presparkas, who really lifted in that second half. Uh, she finished with 25 touches, but five votes to Georgia Nanscorn. Uh, she was almost best on ground. She she also finished with 25 touches. She was outstanding. 25 touches, 10 tackles, 11 clearances, absolutely everywhere. Involved in everything. She was our best. Uh, so we have an early leader for the Everything SNN AFLW Player of the Year Award. And by the way, guys, this week I will be posting the results for the Men's uh, Everything SNN Player of the Year Award. So stay tuned for that. All right, quick look to next week's game. We face the Eagles, who are tipped to be a bottom four contender this year after a poor season last year. They're led by new coach Daisy Pierce, icon of the game, and she's already cooking over there. She led the club to an upset victory over Richmond in her first game of the year, or first game of her career. One point victory. Now, the Tigers aren't really hyped either, but it's still meaning we're going into the game, uh, an away game, by the way. We have to travel to Perth, but we're going into the game as the team further down the ladder. We're now in the bottom four, and the Eagles are up with the winners. Last time we played the Eagles, we lost, so that isn't good history, but Natalie Wood will put some fire in the bellies of our girls and hopefully have us hungry to get the monkey off the back and not our first win of the campaign. It's a good opportunity to do so against a West Coast side that many predict will not be contending for finals. Well, that is that. Disappointing way to start the year. Would have liked the win, but I really did not want to put 43 point loss. That hurts. Uh, we got a lot of work to do from here if we want to play finals. Still a long way to go in the year though. So that is that for now. Video done. Cheers for watching. Make sure you like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, go Bombers.